Uh, before I give you a little bit uh, the, uh, an overview of what we are trying to, to do, just let me tell you that probably each of you knows much more in this area than I personally. There's a very simple reason for that is that I'm in this business only since very, very few months, so I'm still in the learning process. So. <laughs> You'll probably see it <laughs> or feel it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm very glad also to say that uh, there are some colleagues of mine here, and in particular, I welcome the presence of Ayana Ruzoli, who is over there, and who would certainly uh, be able to complement all those aspects that I would never be able to cover, at least for the time being. So, since he is really an expert uh, on the uh, DGRTD part from the uh, Open Science Cloud perspective, uh, and uh, I'm really happy also to say that uh, as far as the European Cloud Initiative is concerned that uh, that was just presented here, we have the whole Commission working very closely together uh, to address some of the challenges that Matthew has highlighted. So, uh, But before I uh, continue, I would like just to um, put a little bit the, um, uh, the frame. So you know that uh, the, um, in the European Commission, the digital single market is one of our uh, ten priorities for the years to come for this uh, uh, Commission, for the Juncker Commission, and that under this digital single market, as Matthew has highlighted, we have promised a number of things, uh, and we start now realizing our promises somehow. The first promise, I mean, wh why, of course, because more and more we realize of course, that uh, the data is more and more becoming the fuel of the whole economy. I mean, so uh, there's no doubt that uh, data are everywhere and data are the fundament for creating knowledge and for, uh, uh, and for uh, further progressing in all areas of human activity. And of course, our motivation is that digital now is moving everywhere somehow. It's really undergoing uh, vital changes to all parts of our activity, including science, but including basically all industrial sectors, and of course, including all human activities. And you can see it around. So. Um, just to give you one or two uh, data, I'm sure that you are very quite, uh, quite well aware of those. I will not focus this time on science data, but I will focus on general data. So today, more or less, we have a situation where we have something like 5 billion connected things already out there from the Internet of Things perspective. Probably by 2020, it will uh, going to be something like 25 billion, so five times more. Today we have something like possibly one billion of people connected through smartphones and, uh, uh, and uh, the social uh, media play also a huge role in connecting those people. We're expecting basically that by 2020, it's easy to say that it may triple even. Uh, basically our, what we call digital universe, that is all the data that we are creating, replicating and using, uh, is doubling every two years. And to give you an idea, by 2020, probably for every inhabitant, we will have something like 5,200 gigabytes of data created. So, and, uh, so you, you see so how much these things are moving and how much these things are going to uh, further uh, influence uh, the way we'll do things in the future. So given that context and given that framework, so we promised indeed that on the data we'll have two concrete initiatives. One which is more focusing on the what we call European Cloud Initiative, which is more about uh, the science data, and one which is more the, uh, uh, the free flow of data, which is more focusing on current business, and in particular uh, on, on uh, uh, personal data or data that would be generated by all those machines and all those things that I've just mentioned. We delivered the ECI in April. Actually, I must be careful of what I say. We just published the very first steps, that is our intentions for what w we would like to put in the, in the future. And you heard that some of those intentions, we start now turning them into sort of implementation strategy. As far as the free flow of data is concerned, which probably will be uh, uh, named as the data economy, this is a communication that we are now preparing and we uh, uh, very likely the uh, publication date is gonna be on the 11th of January. So just after the Christmas holiday, I'm not sure that it's going to be a gift for the new year or something else. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> uh, 
but definitely these are uh, certainly the, uh, the, uh, the two big initiatives that uh, we, uh, uh, we have defined and where we will be programming, I mean, for the next few years uh, with a, a, a number of uh, implementation plans and implementation strategies. So, as it has been rightly said, I will turn, I mean, I will be, as you may understand, as things are still in preparation on the data economy or the free flow of data, it's very difficult for me to talk to you about that today. Uh, things are changing basically every day, so and until these things are stabilized, uh, I, if I tell you something today, it might not be uh, true anymore tomorrow. So, uh, um, But I, mean, I can give you some hints maybe during the discussion. As far as the European Cloud Initiative is con concerned, um, somehow the vision, I would say, is uh, to be able to uh, uh, offer out there a sort of uh, a trusted, uh, federated, open environment for creating around science data a, an ecosystem. And uh, this ecosystem is not only the science ecosystem, but certainly it will be expanding to address also uh, the uh, public administrations and to address also uh, uh, the uh, industry and SMEs. We'll come back to that in a moment. Now, um, if this is somehow what the vision is, you've seen that we do not start from scratch, but there's a lot of things that have already been, uh, have been happening. So the idea is uh, somehow to uh, interconnect all, all those things, federate all, all those things, bring them into a dimension which is around the cloud dimension, that is offer uh, federated cloud services to scientists and later on uh, to other, I would say, communities. But why are, are we somehow doing it? Uh, I would say not only for the reasons that somehow have been mentioned, but there are some additional dimensions. I would say today Europe is basically the larger producer of scientific uh, knowledge in, in, in the world. So, and most of the data that we're producing, I mean, you can ask yourself, are we producing data for uh, 70 or 80 billion euro? How much is the funding of Horizon 2020 today? I think it's around uh, 70 billion euro. Are we producing data for 70 billion euro and are they available? Certainly not. I mean, I can tell you, as, uh, uh, that most of the data that we're producing actually are not even uh, stored in uh, European infrastructures, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, storage facilities. Most of that possibly go to the states, many of them at least, they go to the cloud, or, and in general they go to areas where there is high performance computing next to it. And this is one of the issues that we observe, basically, and that the innovation is somehow emerging from, uh, from, from uh, this combination of uh, big data, of high-performance computing I mean, um, uh, facilities, and of uh, services you would provide to making it happen. So we have quite a lot of people that somehow leave, leave the European Union to go to the States or to other places of the world where these things are happening in a much more proactive way than so far in Europe. Actually, you would even argue that there are many scientific communities. So this is one major motivation for us to say that we need to change things. We need to change how, how these things are happening in Europe. Uh, we have been investing quite a lot so far, but basically all this fragmentation that you have seen, there is time now to address it. It's also time to address the fact that um, many of our you know, scientific communities are not even aware of the value of data that they are producing. Many of the businesses are not even aware of the value of, uh, of those data and, uh, uh, and uh, how much transformative effect that they can have if we start sharing those data. So, and of course, data that is coming from publicly funded research is certainly not uh, always open. You've seen there is a lack of interoperability in many of those issues, in many of those data that is uh, certainly uh, preventing scientists from sharing those data, business from sharing those data, uh, and uh, different communities to work together to, uh, to, uh, to do scientific uh, discoveries based on those data. There is a lot of uh, fragmentation, I think we mentioned already, those things. And there is certainly, as I said before, an increasing demand in Europe for having infrastructures, in particular high-performance computing infrastructures, to be able to uh, uh, exploit those data, uh, build models, simulate, and uh, uh, make new scientific discoveries. Actually, a few months ago, we had one or two supercomputers in the top 10. As of uh, a few days ago, I don't think that there is any more, any European uh, high-performance computer that is in the top 10 uh, worldwide. So. Uh, uh, so you see how these things are changing and how these things are somehow progressing, but certainly uh, we, we thought that there is a moment for action. So with our colleagues from DGRTD and uh, with other colleagues within the Commission, we said it's time now to do something also from, from that perspective. And this is 
more or less the motivation we had for uh, putting in place this communication on the European uh, cloud infrastructures. It is basically addressing the 1.7 million of researchers that we have uh, all over Europe and something like 70 million prof professionals that are around the s and activities. And as I said before, the European Cloud Initiative is about providing a virtual, uh, federated environment uh, which is offering open and seamless services for storage, for management, for analysis of those data, for the use of those data across borders and really across disciplines. I think this is more or less, I would say, the picture today. This is more or less what we want to put in place uh, tomorrow. Uh, I would not expand on the European Open Science Cloud part. I think Matthew was extremely um, um, uh, well providing to you what the challenge is there. I would just focus in one or two minutes on the second pillar of the uh, European Cloud Initiative, which is uh, what we call uh, the uh, European Data Infrastructures. This is underpinning the European Cloud, somehow the European Open Science Cloud. Because this is basically about the uh, supercomputers that we need. This is basically about the interconnectivity that we need. And this is uh, basically about the data servers that we need to uh, provide the kind of services for scientists that was mentioned before. Um, Praise, Jean have already been mentioned and, other, some, and some other uh, initiatives. This is the starting block for us. This is really the starting point for us. Uh, the good thing is that Praise uh, we just had an agreement between uh, uh, hosting members of PRAISE and 25 countries that are participating in PRAISE. PRAISE is basically connecting the uh, d different uh, supercomputing centers in Europe. And you have supercomputing centers that are called Tier 0, the European level, Tier 1, national level, Tier 2, at regional level. There is an agreement between the member states, 25 member states, already around PRAISE. And the agreement is that there will be, uh, there are countries that are investing on uh, very high performance computing, the latest of high performance computing machines that uh, enter into this federated scheme I mentioned before and that are made available together with the other supercomputing centers in this federated infrastructure uh, and uh, uh, become available for the scientists to be able to do their simulations, etc. At the same time, the uh, vision here is that uh, these high performance computing infrastructures uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and all the other, the other two pillars I mentioned, the interconnectivity and the data storage facilities, uh, would be open not only to science, uh, but would be open uh, later on uh, to uh, uh, public administrations and to industries. The reason is very simple. I mean, uh, the, um, you know that, I mean, uh, more and more, uh, a lot of innovation is around providing these uh, HPC services. Actually, a lot of innovation is coming from a triangle, uh, from the convergence between high performance computing, between big data analytics, and uh, the cloud computing. So it is exactly that convergence that we are uh, focusing on with those initiatives, and it's exactly building an ecosystem that is uh, around those three pillars. And this ecosystem is aiming at, I mean, uh, creating a thriving uh, European perspective or uh, with all the players that are around this ecosystem. This is the reason why, and I will close here, uh, this is the reason why indeed we start with scientists, we will upgrade our infrastructures, this is why we promise that we will uh, uh, finance uh, the, um, um, the acquisition of uh, two pre-exascale computers and two full exascale computers in the time frame of uh, between 2020 and 2023-24 and that we will open those infrastructures, first, of course, to the scientific communities, followed by the public administrations and the other business. And uh, our plans, those that have been uh, um, provided in the European Cloud Communication, um, are somehow moving into that direction with the perspective that you cannot provide those services, you cannot open those up without necessarily having an environment that is trusted, without necessarily having an environment which is secure, and without necessarily having an environment which provides the sort of access, not necessarily uh, free access, we'll come back to that later on, but certainly access to all those who have the right to go pick the data and do uh, whatever is to be done. So that's a bit what we are planning. And uh, my last word is, of course, the data flow communication is coming to somehow complement this picture. 
because on the one side we have science data, but we should not forget that it's not only about science data, it's about every kind of data that we have out there. Maybe personal data I mentioned before, maybe business data, maybe data that are generated by different machines, and the free flow uh, uh, of data communication is complementing somehow this vision by providing the necessary, uh, I would say, ingredients for making things happen, for sharing, for uh, data ownership, for data liability, for data interoperability, etc., etc. And I'm sure that some of those aspects will come back in discussion later on. Thank you.